We have a very special guest alert because on today's show, we are talking with former NFL scout Matt Williamson about the Chargers draft strategy and the beginning of the Jim Harbaugh era. You are locked on Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on? Welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I am your host, David Drogemeyer. I've been covering the Chargers for over eight years. I've been one of the co-hosts of the Locked On Chargers podcast for six years, going on seven with my good buddy, Daniel Wade. Big shout out to all the everydayers out there for checking out today's episode of the Locked On Chargers podcast. Please like, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss great interviews like we have with Matt Williamson today. Uh... And we're going to get into some great topics. But before we do that, I got to tell you this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We're going to talk with Matt Williamson about all kinds of Chargers draft needs: receiver, running back, offensive line, some defense. Um, and without further ado, here he is, Matt Williamson. All right, guys, here he is, our very special guest. He is a former NFL scout and the host of the Peacock and Williamson show, as well as Locked On Dynasty. He is Matt Williamson. You can follow him on Twitter at Williamson NFL. He's one of the best hosts on the network, a great follow. Matt, how you doing today, man? I'm great, man. This is going to be fun. It's fun to focus on one team and dig into the Chargers. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I know. You have your uh, your eyes and your ears on so many different teams and so many different players. It's it's going to be nice to have more of a singular focus here. But So, uh, obviously, the Chargers, they have the, the fifth overall pick, and they're, they're going to have a pretty difficult decision on whether they want to take one of the elite wide receiver prospects or maybe to potentially trade down and get a haul of assets and, and help fill a ton of ro- uh, holes that are on this roster. What do you think would be the best decision for the Chargers? I think they need a lot, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys go over team needs a lot, but I think there's more than maybe the national audience realizes. You know, I just pulled up their depth chart. I'm like, man, I don't love that position. I don't love that position. They obviously have a lot of leeway with the new coach. Like, it's not a have to win now or everyone gets fired situation. So the way I'm just phrased that, it would sound like trade down, get as many picks as you possibly can. But, man, I would not want to trade away from one of these three receivers, though. You know, I mean, I understand that Harbaugh might love this tackle class, and I love this tackle class. But the state of the Chargers with Herbert as your quarterback, I think I have to leave this draft with one of those three receivers. And that probably means just staying pat at five. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely uh, something a lot of Charger fans would like to hear. <laughs> I think they feel like after losing Mike Williams and Keenan yeah. Allen that they have to go there and, and address that position with a premium pick. But, I mean, there's a surprising amount of people that really feel like the first four picks in this draft could be all quarterbacks, Jim yeah. Harbaugh among them. I mean, he kind of gave voice to that. Um, but that's never happened before in NFL history. Um, do you, if that is the, the case and that does happen um, and the Chargers have, you know, the best pick of that non quarterback, um, what do you think is the likelihood of a- that actually occurring? You know, that, like I said, that's never happened before in NFL history. Maybe 30%, something 30%, along those lines. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for it to go four quarterbacks right off the board. I mean, I think you, well, yeah, I know you would have to have a trade involved. You know, the the Cardinals would have to get out of there, but there's several teams. I mean, two in your division to me, Denver and the Raiders that might surprise us and do something crazy to move into that top four or top five, even Um, obviously Minnesota's out there looming and the giants could move down just a little and, you know, you could still get your receiver if you're Arizona. So I still think it's a chance, but I can't, get away from what you said like it's never happened before <laughs> you know yeah. I mean, it's pretty rare absolutely absolutely i mean hey uh, jim harbaugh is doing his absolute best to campaign on behalf of jj mccarthy so we'll, we'll see we'll see if that happens but uh, marvin harrison jr is kind of long been considered the number one receiver prospect but there have been some r- reports that there's some teams out there that have malik neighbors as their number one receiver on their draft boards if the chargers have the pick there between those two is there an argument to take neighbors or is marvin harrison just simply too good to pass up 
Yeah, I'm going to throw a Dunze in there as well because okay. I, I honestly think more drafts than not, a Dunze would be the best receiver in the draft. Almost every draft, neighbors would be the best receiver in the draft. And Marvin, frankly, in every draft since Calvin Johnson would be the first receiver in the draft. You know, wow. so I really think these three are unbelievable. And they, we're splitting hairs here. I would take Harrison all day long, though. I mean, as great as I think Neighbors is, as great as I think Adunze is, and we might look back. I mean, I'm not trying to get people worked up, but, I mean, sure. we may look back in five or ten years and say, these are three of the five best receivers in the league. You know, I mean, yeah. they were with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. I mean, like these are like the best legendary guys. class. Yeah. yeah, the Tyreeks have moved on. And, you know, like, I really think that's why – I would not want to trade out of the top eight or nine if I'm the Chargers because yeah. it's just such a great group. And sure, Brian Thomas from LSU or A.D. Mitchell or, you know, that'd be very, very useful if you did a trade down with Minnesota and got a tackle and one of those. But, man, if I can get a transcendent receiver for this quarterback, even if you are going to be a run-heavy team, I just think that you're crazy not to jump on that. And Harrison would be my one, Neighbors my two, a Dunze, my three. But again, if we did it against the last 10 years of receivers, those three might be in my top 12 overall. You know what I mean? Like they're that good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they all have uh, some tremendous skill sets and they all kind of do things a little bit differently. I think Marvin Harrison's more just that complete wide receiver that can do a little bit of everything, has really good releases, really good routes. Obviously, Neighbors is ridiculously explosive and Roma Dunze can go up and get the football. I mean, he's a, a great deep, deep ball kind of jump ball receiver. So I guess it's like, what's your flavor, right? Which right, type right. of receiver would you like to bring in? You think is going to fit your offense, but uh, it's kind of switching gears a little bit over to the, the defensive side. Uh, the Chargers, uh, they need a lot on the defensive side. And, and I yeah, think corner is one of the things that they should be focusing on pretty highly in the draft, even after adding Christian Fulton. But Christian Fulton is kind of a, a guy I think is a, a buy low candidate. They're trying to see if they if he can bounce back in, in a new uh -huh. environment, maybe with a new training staff, get some of those uh, health issues taken care of. But what do you feel about this uh, cornerback class as a as a whole here in 2024? I think it's good, not great. I mean, I don't think there's a Sauce Gardner or Jalen Ramsey. I really wouldn't even want to be the team that is going to take the first corner off the board because I think you can make an argument for several different dudes there. But I really like day two, and I assume that's kind of where you're going with this, is if yeah. they do go receiver, maybe they go tackle. But I, I can't imagine the Chargers end up with a first-round corner unless it's a trade down and it's Minnesota's second pick or something along those lines. But I like day two. I think there's a lot of slots. I think there's a lot of guys that can play both slot and outside. I think the depth is pretty good overall. So, you know, Max Melton, guys like that, that aren't household names. I think yeah. this is a pretty good group. Yeah. Yeah. And they, I, I think, you know, the Chargers need to address that position in, in the first three picks, in, in my opinion. Okay. I, I think it has to be prioritized because right now uh, on the outside, Michael Davis is gone. Uh, Asante Samuel Jr. is really the only guy they have that has experience with the Chargers. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you brought in Christian Fulton, and then you have a pair of second-year players that were mostly special teamers uh, playing the cornerback position for the Chargers. So uh, Jesse Minter is definitely going to have his hands full trying to figure out what kind of corner is going to fit um, in his system. But I'm going to move back over to the offensive side. You talked about Real the quick, I have a quick question for you, actually, yeah. because when I pulled up the depth chart, you know, I just wanted to double check, make sure I knew all the new moves. Sure. I thought interior D line and off the ball linebacker was maybe as big a need as corner. Do you agree on defense? I, I do. Yeah, I think okay. that's definitely okay. a, a, a good uh, assessment. When you look at the defensive line, the only real move they made was adding Puna Ford. And yeah. I mean, that's, okay. that's a guy who didn't get a lot of playing time last year in, in Buffalo and the Chargers lost Austin Johnson, also lost Sebastian Joseph Day. He, I mean, they caught him before the season was even over, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of inexperience there at the defensive tackle position for the Chargers. So I think that's a position that could go very early, a lot earlier than most people are expecting because they just don't have a lot of talent. I mean, they have a couple of guys. I like, I, I like Morgan Fox on the inside. I think he's a, a good interior pass rusher, not as much of a run stopper um, as you would probably want. So I think they need to get somebody who's kind of big and nasty on the defensive line. I, I mean, I think... Uh, Tavondre Sweat's a, a guy that comes to mind for me, you know, from Texas, who's just an absolute mountain of a man that can occupy some space and, and really allow 
those linebackers to flow. But the linebacker is definitely another position they need to address as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there anybody at that position that you like in this draft? We're going to get into more draft talk with Matt Williamson, and we are going to do that right after this. But first, I've got to tell you about game time. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you're going to have. Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. The game time guarantee means You'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game Time gives you all in prices up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. Get images of your seats before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guarantee. I think linebacker is very weak. To be really, honest, yeah, really, yeah. Mm. I don't love the group and. I think a lesson that we should be learning about linebackers, and I know this is a little too late for now, but maybe it's next year's project, yeah. is rookies just really struggle at linebacker anymore, especially highly drafted athletes you know, that aren't super students of the game or don't have yeah. great eyes yet that rely on their athleticism. I mean, the Shanahan's of the world just manipulate them to no end. So I don't know that this class is particularly strong to begin with. And the guys that have upside to be starters, to me, probably are a year away from maybe even being a year away from a year away, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so, yeah, bounce back over to the offensive side yeah, here. Yeah. We, you talked a little briefly about the offensive line, um, and the Chargers have a couple of positions that they, they really need to address on the offensive line. Obviously, center is probably one of the, the biggest ones they're going to have to address with Corey Lindsley all but, you know, certain to retire uh, mm -hmm. this offseason. So that's a position they need to prioritize. I mean, tackle, you might be able to look at as at least right tackle uh, as far as maybe an upgrade there. Trip Hipkins got a couple of years left on his contract, but he gave up nine sacks last year. So looking at this offensive line group here, um, you know, where is there is this a good like offensive line class? Like, where's the depth at? Um, where should the Chargers look to be targeting offensive line help in this draft? It's an amazing offensive line class. I think All it's right. good to hear. OK, at guard. It's OK, at okay. guard. But I okay. think it's tremendous at center, and people don't seem to recognize that, and rare at tackle. I, I mean, obscenely good at tackle. Okay. So, you know, I mean, from alt all the way down to maybe tackle number 10 or so is highly, highly talented players, you know, and okay. a lot of them are right tackles, actually. It's, it's just, <laughs> I didn't think of this coincidence, but I, I do a high percentage of my work for the Steelers and Steelers related. Yeah. I'm in Pittsburgh here. Right. And their two biggest needs on the O line are right tackle and center. Oh, perfect! And, and I can't. So I've been digging into these guys like crazy. I talk yeah. about them too much, to be honest yeah. with you. So I've been telling people, I'm like, just wait your turn. I mean, you're there. It's a great tackle class. Coach Tomlin here in Pittsburgh says, if you have red paint, you paint the barn red. Well, the paint this year is center and red and right tackle to me. So yeah. it works out really well for the Chargers. And maybe our two teams will be uh, pillaging guys from each other on draft day. Well, so, I mean, you, we, we talked about it. Like, what are some of the, who are a couple of centers you like? Who are a couple of right tackles you like? So if we talk about it through the lens of, you know, just the Chargers. So they're not yeah. going to take a center in round one, of course. Right. I don't know that Graham Barton will be there in the second round. He tested so well at his, his uh, pro day that I think yeah. he's going to be a first round player. Jackson Powers Johnson is very, very intriguing. And I don't know Fun this take. to be true. I mean, I don't know this to be true 100%, but there has been some small rumblings about concussion issues. Ah. That's the only thing that I could see keeping him out of round one. And I'm, I hope that's not true. I, I don't know that for a fact. Sure. But he would be great for you guys at the top of the second round. Like nasty my, player. Nasty player. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my Steeler fans here are holding their breath that Zach Frazier from nearby West Virginia gets to the, the 50s. I don't know that he will. That might be yeah. a little early to take him at the top of round two, but center only, quality player. But I started digging into these other guys, and 
I don't know if you got if you're familiar with Brandon Thorne. If your listeners aren't, go look him up. I think he's like the best O line evaluator out there in, in the media. And okay, I, I retweeted this the other day that he thinks, which is flat out rare, that he thinks in a couple of years there might be ten guys from this class that are starting centers in the league. And wow, I was blown away. I mean, yeah, that's a big number. It's a massive number. I mean, there's yeah. only thirty two of them in the world. I right. mean, <laughs> yeah, Van Pran from Georgia. I mean, I think he would fit your guy's system more than yeah the watch Ron Pratt. I, I like him a lot I yeah. like his demeanor and his yeah. attitude uh Penn State's got a guy Norzad that I like a lot Arkansas has Bo Limmer's a good player Bordellini from Wisconsin there's a lot of them and then there's a couple guards that might be center capable as well that's so good. A good class yeah. of centers yeah I mean yeah. usually uh, you, you don't want to go fishing in the center market too much but this is a good class no, I mean honestly, for for Charger fans, we we know we've had the the pleasure of, of walking watching Corey Lindsley play center for them mm-hmm. the last couple of years, and you know when he was at his peak and he played at an All Pro level, it is a true difference maker. He's a force multiplier. He made made everybody around him that much better because of his ability to uh, to communicate, to set protections, and really just help everyone else uh, out uh, everyone else around around him out, make their jobs easier. Uh, anybody at at right tackle? David, I like? can't help but tell you a little story about what I deal with because yeah, I'm 50 years old. When I was born, Mike Webster was a center. He goes to the Hall of Fame. He was replaced by Dermani Dawson, who goes to the Hall of Fame, who was quickly Jeez. replaced by Marquise Pouncey, who's at least going to be on the ballot. So, like, oh, yeah. everyone in my hometown thinks it's like your God-given right to have the best center in the league, and they're, like, losing their mind right now. And yes, it is a force <laughs> multiplier. No question. No doubt. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I mean, so, yeah, right right tackle here. I think it's a position the Chargers could look to upgrade at uh, yeah. because they, they need they need more competition, quite frankly. So any any right tackles that, that you like in this one? If we exclude the first round, yeah. and if it's a trade down, I adore J.C. Latham, and I think yeah. your head coach would adore J.C. Latham. I mean, Yeah, big, big, a lot of size, uh, a lot of length there. Uh, I mean, Brute I think Nate Tice said he's, a, he's built like a globe with legs. You know, I mean, he is... <laughs> I mean, he's the guy you run behind on fourth and one. Yeah. Like, I think he fits the new demeanor of your team really, really well, as does Talise Fawaga from Morgan yeah. State. But these would probably be trade-down guys. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm, with, I'm with you. And when you get deeper into the draft, I think Blake Fisher from Notre Dame is an intriguing player. I think he's kind of got some plug-and-play start-early traits. If you're going to be patient, the, there's a guy from Yale whose name I just abuse over and over. It's Kieran... Something, 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 but look into <laughs> him and he might take some time and maybe you guys could get away with that. You don't need someone to plug in and write this minute. Yeah. Uh, Javon Foster is another one from Missouri. I'm talking about second, third round type guys, probably a third round pick for him that are just really physical, you know, like Roger Rosengarden from Washington's a nice player, but yeah. he's a little more finessey than I think you guys want. I mean, I think you guys yeah. are looking for pile movers. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So the, the Chargers added Gus uh, got Gus Edwards in free agency, but mm-hmm. they're almost certainly going to be taking another running back in, in this upcoming NFL draft sure. um, to help out the new offense under Greg Roman. So many have linked the Chargers to, to Blake Corum for obvious, uh, obvious and other reasons there, but, people. Uh, <laughs> but, what, but what running backs would you be targeting um, if you were the Chargers? It's funny because the more homework I've done, I initially looked at the defensive tackles and the running backs and thought, eh, uh, this this class is okay, not great. Yeah, but I've I've liked the I like the close two positions more now than I did a month ago, and I think there's plenty to pick from. I think there'll be a run of of running backs at some point. Like I could see Dallas starting it in the second round with Jonathan Brooks from Texas. I think he's the best guy there, but I think like end of third round, early fourth, you might see. Eight to ten backs go in a twenty-five pick stretch. You know, like whoever's yeah. going to pull the plug on them, I think is just the floodgates will open. You know, I'm thinking about bigger guys. I would assume you're not looking for the scat back types. I mean, I know Edwards certainly isn't that, but I no. don't think that they're looking for little guys either. No, do you? Um, no. Ray Davis from Kentucky's a little older, but I like him quite a bit in the mid rounds. You mentioned Corum; he's an easy one. Braylon Allen is getting a lot of buzz from Wisconsin. I could kind of take or leave him, but he's big and productive. Yeah. Trey, Trey Benson from Florida State's probably the easy answer. Yeah, yeah I watch Trey Benson. I like okay. Trey Benson. Yeah. yeah. And some people have him as the number one. I think he's my two at the moment. Okay. But he would fit in really well with LA. 
All right. Well, we are going to get into more draft talk and get into the Jim Harbaugh era with Matt Williamson. And we are going to do that right after this. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter. What's the right amount of socializing for you? And how do you recharge? Maybe you thrive around people, or maybe you need some more alone time. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with licensed therapists and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. Yeah, I, I think so as well. I think he's got a, a, some decent hands as a mm-hmm. receiver, uh, does some good work in the screen screen game, has some home run ability as well. So I think he, he definitely would be a good compliment. Uh, switching over to uh, what other name is because I pulled up a list. I just want to make sure I didn't I didn't forget Audric Estime from Notre Dame. Ah, yeah, Audric Estime. Yes, he uh, definitely did, fits what you guys want to do. He 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 does. But do you think the forty times going to kind of shut any teams off from from what what he did? Because I mean, he ran I was going to mention it. Yeah, but it was better at pro day, which okay. they almost always are. But yeah. maybe he just had a bad combine. I, I hope people don't overestimate that. I mean, another Notre Dame guy. Kyron Williams had a really bad 40 time too, and he's yeah. killing it for your rivals in LA right now. So that's true. I, you know, I wouldn't over, I wouldn't get too stuck on that. Right. I mean, Hey, the 40 times of 40 time, you can't ju- just ignore what you see on tape as well. Right. Obviously it's just mm-hmm. a part of the evaluation, not the entire evaluation. Maybe but, it's had a bad day in Indy, you know? Yeah, of, of course it, it happens. It happens. I mean, I'm, for me personally, I'm, I'm more worried about what you do on the football field. Cause that's where your money is going to be made. That's what you're going to be doing for my football team. But Hey, the chargers have a new head coach and his name is Jim Harbaugh. And it's been a long time since the chargers have had an established uh, head coach. That's not a first time guy. The last three mm-hmm. guys have been first time head coaches. What is kind of your view uh, of Jim Harbaugh coming back to the NFL and uh, coaching the chargers? I think it's a tremendous hire. I have great respect for him and his brother and everything he's done in his career, every step of the way. Now, any coaching hire comes with risk. And I do think that during the hiring circle, people just kind of thought, Oh, Harbaugh will be one of the best coaches in the league yet again. Maybe. I I mean, I think he would be, and I'd gladly hire him in a heartbeat, but I do worry that he could be maybe too run centric and the offensive coordinator hire scares me a little bit where 99% of the head coaches would be dying to have the quarterback you guys have. And yeah, I hope he's not handing off the whole time, you know, and, and you know, treating this like it's 1983. And I, I, I can't, I can't and lie and say I didn't have that same fear a little. Sure. Bit, you know, I mean, I think he's a progressive thinker. Yeah, I think he's very smart and I doubt he would take that approach. You know that they're going to be highly competitive, highly physical, a lot of competition in camp. Like, I don't think he's going to play the the veteran over the fifth round pick if the fifth round pick is better. You know, I mean, I think all that nonsense. Which is great. Is, which is great, which is great. And players love them. They run through a wall for them. So I absolutely love the the hiring, but it's not without risk. I mean, I hope he adapts back to the NFL. I mean, being the head coach of Michigan is a lot different gig. Yeah, a hundred percent. But I mean, the the Chargers were a mess last year under Brandon Staley, uh, you know, kind of before that went up in flames leading to, you know, the team to making the decision to to bring in Jim Harbaugh. But how much of an upgrade do you think Jim Harbaugh is over Staley, even with his long break from the NFL, like you mentioned? Major, especially yeah. his presence in the building, prep throughout the week, training camp stuff, you know, like probably on game day as well. I wasn't super impressed with Staley as a game manager, so to speak. And, you yeah. know, he, he's a defensive minded guy guy and the defense never was right just despite having a lot of stars on that side <laughs> of the very ball. True. So uh, I can't say I was a fan. So I think you go from a well below average head guy to definitely an above average head guy and maybe one of the best in the league. Like we talked about, maybe who knows? Yeah. I, I just know that now, uh, like I feel like I'm actually coming into matchups with other teams, at least being on the same level or above as far yeah. as coaching talent. 
last year, last few years under Brandon Staley, I didn't, didn't really feel that very many times. And, and I felt like we saw that throughout the course of the game with their lack of ability to make really quick adjustments in game. Like mm -hmm. I think experienced head coaches can see that and make those adjustments and then that turn into wins. And I just, we didn't see that enough under, under Brandon Staley, quite, quite frankly, but yeah. And Jim I will Arbaugh, say, I bet you will be better prepared throughout the course of the week on Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, the, what you get done in practice. Yeah, well, and he, he brought in a, a gigantic staff, too, on offense mm -hmm. and, and defense. And I feel like it's all guys that are in the systems that they're trying to teach, which I think is going to go over much more smoothly. And the team is going to be able to pick it up a lot quicker than they did, uh, you know, under the carousel of offensive coordinators they had um, and uh, you know uh -huh. the the defense that was you know always honestly mostly told to be a little too complex for the players to really understand and go out there and play fast but Jim uh, I, Harbaugh, commend Omer, I commend ownership though for stepping yeah. up and paying the price and writing the check and going to get the the top guy out there and, and yeah. some stability you know yeah uh, and it definitely went a long way with the fans I can tell I you bet. that I, I mean they, they were they were waiting for the Chargers to make a move like that because there was a connotation out there that the, that the Chargers ownership was pretty cheap uh, mm -hmm. on things that were outside of the salary cap. Like they always spent yeah, up to the salary cap, but outside of that contract conversations, and yeah. there's some weird stuff out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but hey, I mean, new new general manager, new head coach, you know, with Joe Ortiz uh, and Jim Harbaugh. Uh, they said they want to be competitive every year. And, and, you know, when Jim Harbaugh was the head coach of the 49ers, he had success immediately in year one. Do you think that there's a way that the Chargers can have success with Jim Harbaugh in year one? Um, I guess it depends how we define success because, I mean, the most important piece in place, I, I still think Herbert's one of the most underrated players in the league. I mean, I, I adore him. Um, I don't think they have any shot really to compete with the Chiefs in the division okay. or to make waves in the AFC. The AFC is really tough for me. But I also, I mean, I, this isn't exactly what you asked me, but I would not want to be in charge of the Raiders or especially the Broncos right oh, now. Yeah. Like, I, I think those two might be picking in the top five next year. So I think so as well. I'm pretty certain I'll take the Chargers to come in second in their division and may, maybe hover around 500. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Hey, I, I think we want to see some positive development in, in year one. I wouldn't be surprised, uh, you know, if they're fighting for a wild card spot, just because I feel like they're going to be able to run the ball a lot better and be able to put uh -huh. teams away a lot more effectively under Jim Harbaugh than, you, you know, they were yeah. able to under Brandon Staley, but obviously we'll, we'll see how, you know, his game translates from the college realm to the NFL realm. And if they can kind of find that synergy between the run and pass, because I think that's going to be important, but also the defense, with Jesse Minter, you know, coming in after what he did at Michigan, running the number one defense in the country. I want to see how that defense translates to the NFL level and see how he's going to do with guys like Derwin James and Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa and see if they can have some success with those guys. I think it's going to look a lot like the Ravens did last year. I mean, the yeah. Harbaugh brothers have been very creative, you know, kind of holding the strings with their coordinators in terms of, you know, the, some defensive innovations. So yeah. I think it's a great hire. I, I know very little about him as a coach, as a yeah. person, as a man, but yeah. I, I love his lineage. And I think that's the defense everyone's going to try to be stealing from is that yeah. Raven, uh, Michigan Harbaugh defense. I, I, I agree. And and the thing with Jesse Minter is uh, they, they took his entire defensive staff pretty much from Michigan and brought mm -hmm. him to the Chargers. So they're going to probably be a couple to... players coming too. From yeah, Missouri. I would yeah. imagine so. So as well, uh, but you know, even his dad's going to be on staff as well. Um, you know, help, helping him out with game planning and stuff. So that that's going to be cool. Last question here. I'm going to get you out of here yeah. on this. Obviously, Jim Harbaugh, Joe Horty is coming from the Ravens. They want to have that physical up front in your face, blue collar kind of mentality and type of team. Do you think that the Chargers are going to be able to make that transition in year one, or do you think it's going to take more time than that? I would bet when we look back at it five years from now, we'll say 2024 was a massive step forward in that capacity. And then probably by about year two, a second off season, I got my horses to be able to make that happen and really have an identity, you know, where you, you, you I mean, I could see him playing a guard. That's a seventh round pick that can't run, but he's nasty as could be, you know what I yeah. mean? And then, drafting over him the year after that or a nose tackle or, you know, something like that. Just they're not super talents, but they have the right mentality. 
Yeah, yeah, and and I think we're definitely all looking forward to seeing what the Chargers look like under Jim Harbaugh and Joe Hortiz. But that's going to do it here with my interview with Matt Williamson. Please make sure and go check him out um, as the host of the Peacock and Williamson Show, co-host there with Brian Peacock. And, of course, follow him on Twitter at Williamson NFL. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for your time, man. Hope to do this again here soon. Yeah, this was fun. All right, I want to give a special shout out to Matt Williamson for jumping on the show with me today. A lot of great insight there on the draft and kind of the bird's eye view from somebody outside of the organization on the hire of Jim Harbaugh and kind of the timeline of when we can expect some success there. Uh, but hey, that's going to do it for today's episode. Uh, make sure and check out tomorrow's episode. We got a big one planned for you. The Chargers actually reached out to us and invited us out to uh, the offseason workouts. So Daniel Wade is going to be at the Chargers uh, workout facility tomorrow to observe workouts, possibly talk to some coaches, maybe some players. And he's also going to get to sit in on the press conference afterwards. So we're going to talk about all everything that happens there uh, on our Tuesday episode. Make sure and tune back in tomorrow for that one. Um, but before you go, make sure and follow us on all our social medias. You can find me on Twitter at DrotalkSD. You can find my partner, Daniel Wade, on Twitter at DanTalkSports. And you can find the show's page on Twitter at LockdownLAC. You can also find us on Instagram at Lockdown Chargers and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page. Make sure and don't miss tomorrow's episode. It's going to be a big one. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.